So in today's video, I'm going to show you how I made this shopping tote. It's actually quite a good size and it's that big. I'm not so sure I can get it all into the video, but I'm going to try and show you how you can see. So there's the handles. There's the bag. It's got a contrast trim along the top and it's got some applique that I cut with the scan and cut machine. OK, so for this project, you're going to need two pieces of main fabric which measure 18 inches by 15, two pieces of contrast trim, which measure three and a half by 18, two pieces of lining fabric, which measure 18 by 18, two pieces of fabric for your straps which measure 4 by 21 and I've actually already pressed these just to save some time so basically I just fold them in half and press them with an iron open them out and then fold each side into that fold line and then double fold over and then we'll sew these in a little while so you need two of those and you need a piece of contrast or some kind of fabric scrap fabric that you're going to use to put your applique on the front and in my case I've actually already done this I'm going to put an A on it and I'm not going to show you I did this with the scan and cut I'm not going to show you how to cut this because I've done previous videos showing you how to cut fabric and felt with the scan and cut but basically you need a piece of fabric with heat and bond ironed onto the back and then you peel the paper backing away and that leaves a glue which I don't think you're going to be able to see on here but this is shiny and that's the glue and once you've peeled that off you put this glue side down onto a regular sticky mat you don't need the extra sticky support sheet just a regular mat that's got some stick on it and you put that down and then you cut that with your scan and cut now I can't actually remember whether this is heat and bond ultra or heat and bond light. I think it's ultra. If you use ultra, you can basically just iron this once it's cut onto your fabric and you don't have to do anything about it. But I am still going to sew around it with, with my machine. If, if you're using heat and bond light on the back, you cut it exactly the same way but you will need to sew around it to make sure it's secure to the outside of your fabric. So the first thing that we're going to do is sew our contrast strips to our main fabric. So I'm going to put them right sides together and on this, I'm going to, on this bit only, I'm going to use a quarter inch seam, but everywhere else, I'm just going to use a regular straight stitch set in the middle of my foot. Um, so as I say, for this, for the two sections, for the front and the back, when we're adding the contrast on, just a quarter inch seam along here, and then I'm going to open the seams out and press them. Okay, so on my machine, I've got it set to a quarter inch. I've got my quarter inch foot on and I've got my quarter inch stitch. And I'm just going to sew down this long edge. I'm going to do that on both pieces then I'm going to open out the seam on the back and press it open so I've pressed the seams open on both pieces and now I'm going to top stitch on either side of this joining line we've just made on both pieces now 
just before I go any further, I'd just say if you don't have the facility on your machine or you don't have any markings or anything to join this contrast piece to this with the quarter inch seam, just sew it with, you know, your needle in the regular position. Um, it just means that once this is all assembled, your lining piece might be a slightly different size. So you'll just have to line up both this section and your lining and trim it accordingly so they match. So now I've just took the machine back to a basic straight stitch. So I've got my regular foot, but what I'm doing here, I've um, altered the size of the stitch. I've just made it slightly bigger. Again, if you don't have the facility to do this, just top stitch with your regular stitch. And I'm using the inside of my foot's got a, a gap in the middle. So this right hand section here, I'm using this inside line to come along this join line. And I'm going to be stitching a couple of millimeters from that. And then I'm going to turn it around and stitch on this side. bits all over I'm just moving bits out of my way turn it round and do exactly the same thing <clears throat> so I'm going to line up that inner position on my foot again and sew all the way down. I've got my machine at a funny angle so I can do the filming so this isn't normally the position I would sit in to sew. So I'm not sure whether you're going to be able to see this or not but We've now got some top stitching all the way along both sides. Just makes the bag look a little bit more professional when it's finished. So I'm going to do the same on the other piece and then we'll get on to the next stage. Next thing we're going to do is put the applique on. So I'm going to fold the fabric in half and just finger press to give me a crease line. And that gives me the middle of the front of the bag. And then I'm going to position my piece of applique two inches down from this join line. So just to give you an idea, my applique letter is five inches wide at its widest point and six and a half tall. So six and a half tall and five inches wide here. I'm just going to measure two inches down and put that there and line the middle of the letter up with this crease line I've just made with my fingers. I'm just going to iron that in position and then it's ready to be sewn on. So for the next part I'm going to be using a decorative stitch to just make sure that this fabric, um, piece of fabric applique that I've pressed ironed down stays onto the, to the fabric. As I say this is heat and bond ultra I think and you don't have to sew through this, but I always have done. I know some people say it gums up the needle, but I've done it this way for years with both this machine and a previous machine and never had any problem. You could um, use a straight stitch and go all the way around the edge. You could use a zigzag stitch. I'm going to use a blanket stitch that's on my machine. Um, I say if you use heat and bond light, you still iron it on, but then you do definitely need to sew through it. So I'm just going to sew around this and... Um, I'll be back in a few minutes. <clears throat> so that's all sewn on now. So the next thing that we're going to do is put the handles on. Oh, in fact, no, sorry. The next thing we're going to do is sew the seams on the handles. So I'm going to go back to a regular stitch. I'm going to try and get a, just a couple of millimetres from it from the edge and sew all the way down this side, turn it round 
and all the way down this side so I'll have two lines of stitching so I'm going to do that next I'm going to turn it around and sew down the other side. I think my needle just needs re-threading. Okay, so that's one handle done and I'm going to do exactly the same on the other one. Right, the next thing we're going to do is put the handle on. So if you look at your handle, you'll probably have a side that's, that's more cleaner looking than the other. You'll have one where you've got the definite fold over where the fold, of, you've got the fold and then where the two edges met. So if you put that side up, and what you need to do, you don't need to twist your handle here. So basically, you're just going to have that facing up and then bring it in like this. And then when it folds up, hopefully, if I've done it right, you'll have the good side facing out when you put your bag together. And mine's still got a crease down the front where I folded it in half before to position my applique. But if yours has disappeared... Fold your fabric in half and find your middle point. And I'm going to position my handle three inches on either side of this fold. I don't know if there's a, a definite rule on this or not. This is what I'm just going to do on this one. And I'm just going to mark it. So I'm putting the three inch on this fold and making a mark here. And then on here at six inches, just with one of these air erasable pens. And then I'm going to take this, just cut these stray threads off. I'm going to take this inside and place that in this inside edge and place that there and put a pin in it. And then without twisting this, you don't want to get this twisted so it ends up wrong. So keep it. So it's kind of flat and bring it round and put the, the inside of here against this mark and put a pin in it. So what you should have, you should have the fold line of your handle both facing in and these outside edges will be where the two sides met. So you're going to do that and you're going to do that on both front and back. So you can measure it or you can put them so they're both right side up and line them up and then you can get your other handle and do exactly the same. So have your not so neat a side facing up and then position them so they match with this one and put a pin in. That one doesn't match up, so I'm just going to move that one back. Perhaps I should have measured it. You can measure it. I'm just trying to save some time. So you've got your two handles in position. You need to get your lining piece. And put one out of the way for now. Bring this one back in so hopefully you can see it. And we're going to take the lining piece and this should this should be the exact right size now because I did a quarter inch seam here. This might be where yours is slightly different. If you've used a bigger seam here, this piece might be shorter than this. So you might have to trim this piece down. I'm using a piece of calico here. I'm not so sure there's a right or a wrong side. So I'm just going to put the two sides together. 
and just put an extra couple of pins in. And we're going to sew right along here. So we, we're joining the fabric and the handles all to the main piece so that when we open it out, it should look like this. And we're going to do that on both sides. So I'll do that and I'll be back in a few minutes. When you're sewing these up, just be careful when you get to the handles. Remove your pin when you get near. And just take your time going over the, the handle because you've got two layers of fabric and your handle to get through. And we're going to top stitch this bag at the end as well so that will give extra support on the handle so we're not just relying on this one seam that's how it looks now. I'm going to do the same to the other side. So I've sewn the handles onto both pieces and this is what we've got and then what I've done I've turned it over and I've pressed the seam in the way that it wanted to go so on this one with the handles facing down towards the good side of the bag I've pressed the seam up. This one it wanted to go Oh yes, it's, it's gone up as well, so I've pressed it up. What we're going to do now, we're going to put the right sides together. So I'm going to turn it over, I'm going to keep the handles here in the middle out of the way, and we're going to line it all up right sides together and pin it together. So I'll just try and bring this down to show you. Okay, so we've got the right side to the right side. Just going to put a couple of pins in. And again down here, it's going to get a little bit bulky because you've got the handles there, but just keep them down out of the way so they're not, you know, going to get sewn into anything. Then you want to line up your side seams here and put a pin in. And again, this is a bit like the pencil case, I think it was, I did recently. Nest your seams, so one side the, the seam goes that way and on the other it goes this way. And do the same on the other side. Line your seams up here when you put your edges together and have your seams going one way on one side and one way on the other. And put a pin in to keep your seams together. And then just pull it out so it all lines up and just put a couple of pins here and there to hold it together. Okay, so what we're going to do now, we're going to sew all the way around, but on one side of the lining, we're not going to sew, we're going to leave it open. So I'm going to put a line to remind me. So from there, in fact, no, not from there, from here to here. And if you can see, this is an air erasable pen, but this is on the inside of the lining. So if you've only got a pencil or something, that's fine. Just gonna put a mark. So I'm gonna start here I'm going to come all the way down across the bottom, up along the top, back and stop here. And I'm going to back tack at the beginning of the end of that one and the beginning and the end of this one. And I'm leaving this gap open here so that I can turn the whole thing through when I've finished. So I'm nearly all the way around now. And I'm just going to show you what happens when, or how I do it when I get to a corner just for anybody that's new. So I'm following the edge of the fabric with the edge of my foot. I've got my standard needle position, which is in the middle. 
just going to remove that pin. And I stop about five milli from the end, keep the needle down and just pivot the fabric and then you're ready to carry on. Okay, we're ready to turn. Oh no, we're going to do the corners next. Okay, so we're going to box out the corners now on all four corners like we did on the recent project. I um, can't remember which one it was. It was the pencil case or... Oh, it was the storage caddy. So I'll put a link to that video directly below. But basically we're going to cut a two and a half inch corner. We're going to use this time. I think we use one and a half on the storage caddy. I've cut a square with the scan and cut at two and a half inches. You can do it with an ordinary ruler, measure two and a half inches across and two and a half inches down and make a point and join and make a square. Or you can use a quilter's ruler, but we're doing it from the stitch line, not the edge of the fabric. So find your stitch line, but I find it easier to just make myself a template. So I'm going to put my two and a half inch square there and I'm going to draw around it. You can use an air erasable pen, a pencil, anything. This is just what I've got to hand at the moment. I'm, I'm going to extend the lines so they go through into the seam allowance. This is on the inside, remember, so it doesn't matter if you do it in pencil or pen, as so long as obviously it doesn't come through your fabric. And then the next thing to do is cut these out so you just follow your lines. Okay, so they're all cut out and this is what you've got. So you're going to open up and you're going to bring the side of your bag and the bottom of your bag seams together in a straight line. So you need to open them fully like this hoping you can see this and the, again they'll want to nest put your seams together and have your seam going one way on one side and one way on the other and just put a little pin in or use a clip anything that you can find to hold it and you're going to do that on all four corners and what you're going to do is sew along here so I'll turn this round Open it out, fully open it out. I'm trying to do this in midair, but it's easier if you do it on a on a flat surface. Nest your seams. Put a pin in just to hold it in position. And we're going to do that on all four sides and sew straight across. And you're going to back tack at the beginning and at the end. And again, use the foot on your machine on the outside edge and come along. So I'm going to do that to all four corners. Okay, so I've got my pins in, just going to line up the edge of my presser foot with the edge of the fabric and back tack at either end and do a straight line. Just take your time going over the seams. I'm using linen and it's I've got threads all over from it last one
and that's it all four corners done you've got an opening here where you're going to turn it inside out which is what i'm going to do next and the moment and truth the moment of truth will be to see if it's all gone together properly right so i've turned it inside out just put your hands in and make sure you push all your corners out on your box corners and then you just need to sew up this side seam so again you just go you're going to roll in the seam it probably will want to fold in itself follow the seam line down and just put a few pins in and just put one in the middle you can finger press it if you're using a cotton type fabric you can finger press it and it will stay in place and then you're just going to sew very close to the edge start backwards and forwards at the beginning all the way along this edge backwards and forwards at the end because it's the lining and it's on the inside you're not going to see it anyway and that will just seal that up okay, so that's that done and then you're just going to push the lining inside the bag this is quite a big bag so it's not easy for me to get it all in on the camera but hopefully you can see it's easy to do just push it in give it a bit of a shake it will fall down in there put your hands in get your box corners all lined up and then you're going to just make sure that all your lining all rolls inside all the way around you can press this at this stage if you want we're going to top stitch it i might just give mine a quick press okay so i've pressed it i've removed the base off my machine to expose the free arm and i've slid the bag on with the handles going under the presser foot I'm going to start just away from the handle. I'm going to top stitch all the way around. Again, I'm going to line the top edge of the bag up with the edge of my presser foot. And I'm just going to leave the needle in the position that it's in, I think, or I may just move it over slightly. But it doesn't matter. You, you do whatever you prefer. If you can't move your needle, it, it's not vital. And then I'm going to sew all the way around. Take your time when you're going over the, the seams. So I'll keep going and I'll come back in a few minutes when it's all done. Okay, so I decided to do a second line of stitching. I'm not sure whether you're going to see it, but basically there are two rows of stitching here. I just move my needle over. If you've not got that facility, just move your foot so that you can um, get nearer. I decided to, because this first row I did only just catches the handle. So I wanted a bit of extra security. So I did the second row. So all in all, I think hopefully you'll, you'll agree that that's a nice shopping tote. The handles are actually long enough to go over your shoulder. But if you don't want them that long, you could just cut them shorter. Um, but either way, it's a nice and it's a good size and all fully lined bag. So I hope you like that. Um, please like, share and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.